morning and welcome to this week's Your Soul Matters broadcast. The Your Soul Matters broadcast is a ministry of the House of Deliverance Church. I'm your host, Tatiana Cody. It is my hope that this broadcast and the message you're about to hear will inspire you, encourage you, and convince you that your soul truly does matter. It matters to God. It matters to us here at the House of Deliverance Church, and we hope that it matters to you. Without further delay, let's welcome our speaker this morning, Evangelist Leslie Hughes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad to be here with you on today. And uh, this morning, we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you about the benefit of dying. The benefit of dying. My scripture text is coming from the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20. It reads, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I but Christ liveth in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Our second scripture today of reference is coming from Romans 6 and 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Amen. Amen. You know, life is very unpredictable. Even with the best of our plans and the best of our intentions, no one can predict for sure what's going to happen in life. Things come up. Amen. Um, Jesus was very thorough in preparing us for this life that we would live in him. He said that you're going to suffer persecution. You're going to go through some things. You're going to have trials and tribulations. And even with that, even with our preparation that he gave us, we get nervous when unexpected and scary things happen. Amen. Uh, when these times come, we all need to be reminded by understanding what it means to follow Christ. Uh, our lives will not be out of control or they won't be a fearful place because we live in him and he lives in us. And because of that, all things will work together for those that are in Christ. Amen. Amen. So this morning, I'm going to tackle two questions. The first one is, what does it mean to be crucified? The second is, why is it important for me to be crucified? Amen. Amen. So the definition of crucifixion, our first definition, we know, we understand, Jesus was nailed to a cross. Anybody that's ever been around church or talked to anybody that's been to church knows what a crucifixion is. When uh, he was put up on the cross to die, killed for our transgressions, amen? But uh, a further definition of what it means to be crucified says to subdue or to mortify the flesh. That means to bring flesh under control. And for our purposes today, I'm going to focus in on a latter definition that says to destroy the power of a thing. Amen. Think about that. To destroy, to crucify is to destroy the power of a thing. Amen. Crucifixion in uh, uh, during the time when Jesus was crucified was a punishment reserved for the worst of criminals. It was an execution done in the worst possible way. It was a long process. It was a gory process. And it was designed to humiliate and intimidate those that saw it. Amen? The people that came and witnessed this, this was a, a method of the Romans who were very proficient in crucifixion. It was a way to intimidate them into subjection. I want your mind to rest on that for a minute. We are following, the word of God says today that I am crucified with Christ. Amen? Some of us know a little bit about what it feels like to be intimidated, to be humiliated. Amen? Amen. So when we go to this cross, we go to it the same way that Christ did. No one had to drag him to the cross. Amen? Amen? The world would like you to believe that, oh yeah, they took him and uh, they took him against his will and they killed him. But I'm here to remind you, Jesus went to the cross willingly. Amen. And we are to go to the cross 
willingly. Amen? Amen. Uh, Rome didn't understand, and they were confused initially, why this man was so calm. He wasn't trying to defend himself. He wasn't giving reasons. Well, I told him this because this. You know, he wasn't trying to fight them and, you know, wrestle himself out of the crucifixion. The Bible says he opened not his mouth. Amen. 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 Remember, our topic today is the benefit of dying. We are wired to survive. We know how to do everything that we can do to keep ourselves alive. Amen. Fight or flight. We're, we fight to maintain not only our lives, but our reputations. We fight to maintain our, our status, whoever it is we think we are, we fight to maintain that. Amen? But Jesus' life, as I mentioned, was not taken. He laid it down. And likewise, he is calling us to willingly forsake those life-saving tactics. Amen? He willingly took on the shame, the ridicule, and the rejection of the world to perform the will of God. Amen. When we look at Jesus on the cross, it says in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed. Amen. He prayed. He offered up uh, prayers unto God. He cried. And the Bible says, even in so much as he feared. Amen. But in the end, he yielded himself and was obedient even unto death. To be crucified with Christ is to do the same. I must be willing to lay my life down. Paul's illustration in Romans 6 and 3 says, Know you not that all of us who have been baptized have been baptized into Christ, and just as Christ laid down his life, we lay down our life, and we are resurrected in newness of life. That's what Romans is saying. You know, of late, we've been going through uh, a phase of baptisms, rebaptisms. Amen? Well, it's going to be very important from here on out, you all. See, a lot of us came to this baptism because we uh, recognized that maybe we didn't understand it fully in the beginning. You know, maybe there were some things, we went back into some same behaviors, some alive behaviors, and we recognized that, wait a minute, I got to get this thing right so that I can actually live the life that God has given me to live. So we yielded. No one dragged anybody into the baptismal pool. No one chased you there. Recognize that you even went through some, some challenges because some of us probably wrestled with, well, what are people going to think? What if I do this? I hold a position. Are they going to look at me like, because remember the, the teaching was, if you have backslidden, you know, if you have not been obedient to God, well, if I step up, how are they going to look at me? Amen. But at some point, we made the decision that that didn't matter. I need to be with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. He says, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Look at that. Who loved me. He loved me and he gave himself for me. You know what turned the tide for him? Even though in that garden he wrestled. Love for the Father. Love for creation turned the tide. That meant that now, even though I have these emotions in the flesh, he was in the flesh at that time. Even though my flesh is fighting and warring to survive, love makes me lay it down. Amen. 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 Even the, you know, the, he came up against the fear of the cross, the fear of death. The Bible says he, he conquered sin in the flesh. Amen. The, power, the, the powers of the gates of hell could not prevail against him. He went on and he said, uh, all power in heaven and in earth has been given unto me. Amen. Amen. When he rose, he took the keys to hell and death. He has all power. And that's a message to the church today because every now and again we got to remind ourselves of that. That when he rose, he rose with the, the keys to hell and death. All power in heaven and in earth has been given unto him. In this climate that we live in, we need to remind ourselves of that. Or we're going to be running around like the world, scared and hiding. Amen? Amen. 
The apostles ran off and left Jesus. Amen. Why? Because they were afraid. Because they wanted to preserve their lives. Because they looked and they said, if I get next to him, that's going to happen to me. Amen. 1 John 4, 17, 18 says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Just as he submitted himself and calmed himself down and recognized that I came to do the will of my Father, that's how we need to live this life. Amen. 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 Our lives have got to, we have to recognize that the old man is dead. The world's going to come at you with a whole bunch of stuff to frighten you. Yeah. But I'm dead already. What you got? Yeah. Amen. When we recognize that we are dead already, we cease from fighting. There is a rest for the people of God. Amen. That's what the word says. And that rest is when you cease from your own labors. Is that all right? When we finally realize that my life is here with Christ in God and I come to do, like Jesus said, only what my father has given me to do. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. So uh, because as he is, so are we in this world. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. Let's take a moment to look at that. Uh, Sister Leslie, are you telling me I don't love God? No, I'm telling you. That if you fear, you are not made perfect in love. We must understand that uh, uh, love and trust go hand in hand. If the more you love God, the more you trust God. The more you trust God, the less you will fear. Amen? If you are walking in fear today, I submit to you that you don't trust God. We don't want to say it like that. Nobody wants to hear it, but that's what it is. I don't trust God, therefore I fear. Because when I love God and I know that he has my best interest in, at heart, I don't have to fear anything. Amen? It changes my attitude. Amen. So what does it mean to be made perfect in love? It means to be absent of doubt. To be absent of of the doubt and confusion, you are no longer confused that God has all power. He has all, all authority. Yes. Amen. If you're still fearful, it is because you do not recognize whom you serve. Mm -hmm. That all power in heaven and earth has been given unto him. Amen. Even Jesus, uh, uh, back then, even in the midst of him, crying out to the Father, saying, let this cup pass from me had already made up his mind that I'm going to do what I have to do. And see, what we often do is we wait until the moment of crisis to try to make a decision. Amen. But the decision has to be made well in advance. In nothing are you to be terrified by your adversaries. In nothing. Because to them, the Bible says, it is an evident token of perdition. If you're running scared and you're crying and you're hollering, about the things that are happening in your life, amen, it's because you have not died yet. Is that all right, somebody? Yeah. The benefit of dying is that I can live free from fear, free from confusion, free from even wondering what's going to happen to me next year. Anything that comes on the horizon, I already have a plan. Is that all right? What is that plan? I'm going to trust in God. He has all power. He will not let me fall. He will do what has to be done. Amen. And because I trust him, I will never fear. I want to thank you all today. I just want to remind you all also that to walk upright before the Lord. Remember that the name of the Lord is blasphemed among the, the Gentiles when we walk in duplicity. You can't say one thing out of your mouth and let your actions say another. Is that all right? You must say, let your amens be amen. Let your nays be nays. We walk up right before the Lord. We submit to his leadership, to his guidance. We do what he is asking us to do. And when we do that and we recognize his lordship in our lives and we are committed to death, then we will never fear. Amen. Amen.
Amen, amen. I truly amen. hope the word you just heard was a blessing to your soul. As the minister said, there's benefit in dying. There's freedom in dying and being with Christ. Amen. If you are looking to learn more about God, come visit us. Information can be found at our church website at hodchurch.com. If you would like someone to talk to or would like to receive prayer, please call 1-800-741-SOUL or 1-800-741-7685. We look forward to seeing you next week for another inspired message and messenger. Until then, don't forget, your soul matters.